when you start your business, you usually know pretty well why you start a business. Because, for example, for most of my clients and for myself, we start a business from our passion. There is something you want to share with the world or show to the world. You just cannot hold yourself back. But what usually happens is multiple years down the line, you start realizing that maybe you don't love your business anymore and your work has become a job and it has become a real chore. And this is what we're going to be talking about today because I have felt that way a couple of times and there's no shame in that. It's actually very normal as you and your business mature, but it is important that we get you right back on the track where you need to be and we get you back in alignment and in love with your business. So what I'll be sharing with you today is the four things I have done over and over again so that I could fall back in love with my business and started having fun again. Hello, hello, and welcome to Play to Win, the show where we turn your passion into profit so you can live life on your own terms. I'm Amy van der Putten from Fast Forward Amy, your host and coach, and I'll bring you a new episode with simple strategies every Tuesday. The first thing I did is actually a combination of two things. Well, I'm holding up two times two fingers, so that's four. (laughs) By the way, if you don't know, the Play to Win podcast uh, can also be found on YouTube where you can actually see my face uh, and all of my curls that are unmanageable for any type of podcast. So I've just basically given up and I'm also wearing a see-through dress. So definitely come and check out my YouTube channel. (laughs) Well, actually, before anything else, maybe we should look at how we are feeling. Like, how do you notice you've fallen out of love with your business? For me, what I noticed is I would wake up and dread the day. This happened to me a few years ago in my first business. And then it happened to me a while ago as well, where I was constantly just telling my boyfriend I was dreading the next day. And in the morning, I didn't really want to wake up and I started snoozing a whole lot. For me, that was a sign that I wasn't loving what I was doing anymore. And at a certain point, I hired a new business coach and she asked me, how would you score how much you love your business right now? And I was like, three out of 10. (laughs) And then I knew I had to change something. So sometimes you don't really notice, but I do want to ask you that question. If you would score how much you love your business right now out of 10, how much would you rate that? And if it's below a seven, I think it's time to take action. So here are my four steps. And then that brings me to the first step that I was already talking about, which is actually a double one. So what happened to me over the years is I mistakenly started listening to other people. And those other people actually started giving me a ton of advice about what I should be doing with my business. And they told me, you shouldn't coach that much anymore. Um, That's not a fully scalable business. You should just focus on other things and delegate everything out to your team. And I was like, okay, so I need to fire myself from my business and I need to get, delegate everything out to my team. So that means I shouldn't be doing this much much coaching anymore. And I was very like caught up in the whole, oh, if I get pregnant, I want to take pregnancy leave. So there can't be any ongoing coaching programs because I'm the coach. So, okay, combined with a few other reasons, I was like, okay, I'll coach less. And then actually in the past year, I realized, shit, coaching is actually the thing that lights me up so, so, so much. It's why I started. It's my true passion. I love seeing people grow. And I noticed that because of other people's opinions and because of the busyness of my day-to-day business and the amount of clients I had, I had actually fallen out of love with my business because I wasn't actually working in the business that I had originally built because I was barely coaching anymore. So because I had very little time, I started doing less coaching where that is actually the core of my business and the core of my passion. And this might be like a designer who starts outsourcing designing so they can work on the client relationships. And after a while, they realize, oh, but wait, maybe I need someone else to do the client relationships and I should be actually at the drawing table. In the corporate world, they teach you to outsource and to delegate everything. But what if the thing you're delegating is actually the thing you love? For me, this is the same with launching. I know there are many people out there who say, outsource your launch, outsource your sales. But I actually really love creating content around those things. So I shouldn't fully outsource my content because I love creating content. What I should actually do is make time for myself so that I can create content. So if you want to start falling 
in love again with your business, my first tip to you is stop listening to what other people think you should make your business look like unless you have a reason to listen to them and not because they are your family or something. What do they know about your soul's work? They don't know anything, only you can know the full picture. And start focusing on why you started. If you're feeling a disconnect in your days, have a look at your days and are you actually doing what you started out to do? Usually the answer is no, you're spending a lot of time in your emails and not a lot of time on actually creating the products, which is probably what you love, or doing the coaching or talking to people. So start adding that back in. And I have a little pro tip for you there. You might think, okay, so then I need to eliminate a whole bunch of other stuff, but that is usually very difficult. What I would recommend is just look at adding instead of subtracting. So this is kind of the same with food. I like to not say I need to restrict my food, but I would just like to add in more vegetables. When I add in more vegetables, I automatically eat less carbs. If I have more vegetables, I'll have more fiber and my digestive system will thank me for it. So I'll look at adding instead of restricting. This is the same in your business. You can just say, hey, I'm going to do more of what I love. And then you're going to figure out that all of those other things maybe need to be more condensed or actually outsourced or eliminated or whatever. Okay, so tip number one, get back to your zone of genius. And dare to go against the rules of what other people think you should do. My second tip to start falling back in love with your business is to see it as a partner, but not see it as your whole entire being. You've heard this before in relationships. They say you need to be happy without your partner. And granted, last year I was at a point where I was like, you know, I am satisfied with myself and my life, but I really would like a partner. And I do think there is a a part of us psychologically as well as human beings we need to flock together and I think as entrepreneurs we often do really need to have that business because it's what we're wired to do but it doesn't mean that we are one and the same as our business and this is what I started changing for myself instead of looking at myself as being one and the same as my business and being a servant to my business I started looking at my business a little bit more as an actual business and as something that needed to be professionalized and that needed to support me and not the other way around and some simple things I did to change that is I installed a new office in my house. I stopped working throughout the house. I usually already didn't do that a whole lot, but I started noticing that I didn't really like my office space. And I believe that you need this context of like, this is your spot to work. Like I'm sitting in my studio now. This is where I record podcasts. It's almost like when I walk in, I'm like, yeah, podcast time. (laughs) And in my office, it's like, yeah, let's get to work. But I didn't want my entire house to feel like work. So I always tell my clients in the Fast Forward Academy this when they're starting business coaching, like, hey, so if you work from home, what's your work spot? And does it actually inspire creativity? This is kind of like when I was in university, I used to drink a shit ton of Red Bulls. Cannot imagine me now doing that. But back then, just me like popping open that can of Red Bull would just be like, yes, brain, it's study time. You know, like that's the same when you have a good office space. But what happened is, okay, I switched the office, loved my office a whole lot more, actually invested in some furniture, just really convinced myself that it was worth it to sit in a nice environment. But then I noticed, you know, the phone went with me everywhere, which is actually really also work for me. Just being on my phone on socials, that's work for me. So what I started doing more and more, and I've started gradually increasing that, is I reinstalled downtime on my phone so that I can find that off switch in my brain. So all of the apps that have to do with work, I have put downtime on them. What I already didn't do is have my email app installed on there, but I did have like my Slack app. So I still have it, but it's downtime. So if after 8 p.m. I'm like, oh, I want to check something, my phone is like, no, <laughs> because I call it sleepy time. I think that's much cuter. But the next step there was actually that I left my phone in my office because when I am home and I'm with my boyfriend, my relationship and my cats, I'm like, why should I be on my phone? So I actually charge my phone in my office. So at the end of the day, I was always really good at turning off my computer, but I was like, if I turn off my computer, why don't I turn off my phone? I'm not perfect at this yet, but I'm practicing it. I'm just leaving the phone in the office. And that's also how I start my days, without my phone, because I am not my business. I am not my social media. Finding that off switch, it doesn't have to be perfect. I see my podcast manager looking at me like, don't know if you actually do this. (laughs) They are also very bad at this. They don't have off buttons. It's actually a little bit of a thing. I strive to always be very honest. So I recently had performance uh, reviews and everyone is like, yeah, we need to work on our work-life balance. And I was like, 
fuck shit. This is a culture thing in our uh, organization, which is really normal for an organization with like the size we are with eight full-time employees. And I started noticing, this is going to be funny because they're listening to me as I'm saying this, but I started noticing that I was working on my health a lot and some people on my team started doing the same thing. And it dawned on me that I actually have, which is like super obvious, but I have an, an example position. And then I realized I am setting the example. If I walk more and they start walking more, If I work on my hormones and they work on their hormones, that also means if I have good work-life balance, they are going to have good work-life balance. So ever since then, little by little, I'm trying to show more of an example of the work-life balance. They are now smiling. Haha, <laughs> cuties. They are so cute. I have the best team in the world. The only thing they're not good at is stopping their work. <laughs> We're all a little bit too much of high achievers, so that's actually a little bit of a challenge, but it's it's an honor to have that in your business. But this is just something I see with so many entrepreneurs. You have no off button, but I'm gonna give you the real truth here. I'm actually gonna give you a resource to help you. If you recognize yourself in this, you're like, yeah, but Amy, I have so much motivation and energy. That's good. But we want it to stay that way and take it from someone who's been at this for a while. If you don't regulate yourself, at a certain point, you're gonna burn out or you're gonna start hating what you do and then you won't be able to get back to it. And we don't want that. And the fact that you're here listening tells me that you're a little bit closer to that point than you would ever dare to admit to anyone in your environment, aside from maybe your fellow coaches in the Fast Forward Academy, because obviously... Our coaches can always open up about this because we offer safe spaces for everyone who's like in that business sphere. It is just different than your friends who aren't self-employed. So what I use as a tool to improve this is actually my end on a high worksheet. So this is something I made for my coaches and it's actually a worksheet that you use one week long. I'll give you a link for it later. And it indicates if you are ending your day on a high or not. And sometimes... I'll be like highly energetic, for example, when I'm ovulating, which happened this week. And I'm like, yeah, but I can still do this. And I'm like, I still have the energy for this. Let's do another one. Let's do another story, another video. Hey, I can add this meeting. And then the next day I'm like, holy shit, which truck drove over me? Well, that's because I didn't end my day on a high, but I took the you're still on a high as a sign like, yay, I need to keep going. But it's not the case. It's actually so that when you are working, you want to teach yourself to stop working when you are still feeling good. This can be difficult for high achievers who are building their business or who are very motivated in their jobs, hello team fast forward, because they always go the extra mile, which is by the way, not always in our control. Sometimes you have the taxes to file, you have the launch that's happening, you have the boss who delivered content too late and you need to work on the files or maybe your boss got the assignment to wait. We all have our struggles. Sometimes you just need to do the thing, but you shouldn't be doing it every day. So if you want some work with that, I'm going to give you the worksheet. You can print it out. Just leave it on your desk. And at the end of the day, every day when you're leaving your phone at your desk, you're going to fill out the sheet. And it has four simple assignments. One, you indicate in which color you are ending your day. In the green, in the yellow, in the orange, or in the red. Red is too far. Bad, bad person. No, bad boss of yourself <laughs> we want to be more like yellow i mean headed towards green is gonna be an exaggeration let's be honest we're not gonna end in green always but when we're starting to do this not ending in red and just moving it up a bit it's gonna be really great for you so print it out if you want to see the visual what's the link does anyone know okay. can you test it yeah. i'll keep talking and uh megan is gonna test it for you megan is a person who writes much of the wonderful copy you see when you get emails from us What would be super cool is if someone who's listening right now would actually write a review on Apple Podcasts and say, hey, Megan, great copy. That would be the shit if someone could do that. Okay, so it's fastforwardamy.com forward slash energy management. If you go there, it's just a simple printable. You take it to your printer if you still have that. I know that sounds like the Middle Ages. You print it out, you put it on your disk and fill it out for one week and tag us when you're doing it because... It's a really good exercise. Maybe we can do it with the team in the week that we're actually releasing this, uh, this worksheet. 
And then it has three questions and at three questions, you just fill out every day is what went well, what could have gone better? What am I missing for future success? And maybe for you, it's like, what went well? Oh, I started my day with focus. And then what could have gone better is "Mm, I let the meeting run late. And because the meeting ran late, now everything else became a shit show. And then it's like, what are you missing for future success? Well, a planned out day because I had a bunch of tasks, but I had no time to actually execute them. This could be an example of what you fill out in that form. And after a week, you're going to have a really great overview of where you fuck shit up. (laughs) The next one, the third tip is a big one for me. And one that took me a lot of going against my people pleasing side to realize because I started my business not as an online business. Then I started creating an online version of my business because one, I wanted to reach more people all over the world and I knew online was going to help me because I only had 24 hours in a day so I had to start scaling and online gave me the tools to do that. But two, I also created an online business because I wanted to be able to work remotely a whole lot. And what I started realizing is because a couple of years ago, I started hiring my first team members and then we hired an office space for my team members and then I started going to the office is that I was at the office and I wasn't traveling as much anymore because I always felt guilty about that. But I realized that a part of the joy for me was having the online business and having the freedom in time and travel and I'd kind of given that up and that didn't feel great to me because freedom and independence are some of my core values and some of the reasons why I started my format of my business. So I looked at that and it really got triggered actually when someone on my team asked me for a period of remote working last year and I was like, I'm going to approve this for you, yet I am here in Belgium, which I don't necessarily love. My three brothers have moved, moved abroad, I'm not kidding you. My brother Matthew moved to Australia after he lost a dear friend in an accident, changed his life. He moved to Australia, met a girl. He's going to get married to her. Amelia, love you, but also, you know, (laughs) you took my brother. No, it's not true. Love Amelia. They're going to get married. I'm going to have a fabulous time in Australia at the wedding. Uh, And then my two other brothers, they were like, let's move to Amsterdam. And now I'm like, okay, but the parents, <laughs> typical girl, typical people pleaser, the parents. So I, I, with COVID and then having a relationship and plus kids and the parents, I'm like, I'm here with the parents and I want to stay close to them. But I have decided, don't know if I was talking about that. I'm going in circles, but whatever. Freedom is so important to me and I shouldn't people please by staying in Belgium, not for my team, not for my parents. If anyone wants to join me, they're welcome to join me. My team and I have made some trips as well. I think they can't wait until we do another trip. Let me tell you, if we do a great launch, we will go on a trip. Speaking of launches, by the way, I don't know if any of this is speaking to you, but if you're still here, probably it is. If you're looking for more freedom in your business and more profits so you can actually get after that freedom, I'm actually launching my Business Freedom Elevator in two days if you're listening to this live. And that's actually my flagship coaching program, but in a faster version. So I launched it for the last time a year ago. And ever since that point, I kind of like pressed pause because I was like, well, the whole coaching thing, I needed to figure out like, do I want to coach? Am I allowed to coach? And I figured out that I still really loved coaching and I should actually be doing more of it, not less, but also that I needed to make the program more aligned with my values. So I have made it faster, which is not going to be a surprise if you know my name, which is Fast Forward Amy. So I turned it into a 12 week coaching program where we turn your passion into profits and freedom. So if you're currently lacking some profits or lacking some freedom in your business and you're basically just stressed out and you hate everything, maybe that program is right for you. We're launching it in two days when this episode airs. Uh, If you're listening later, it might still be open, might be closed. But what I would say is if you're interested, go and check it out through phosphoritamy.com forward slash BFE. Depending on when you're listening, you're going to get access to the waitlist. Now the waitlist is going to get a nice and juicy discount don't miss out on it. This one is in Dutch. In the future, we're going to be launching it in English. There's a bunch of stuff coming up. This is the flagship program that has helped over 1,500 entrepreneurs in Belgium and the Netherlands towards more freedom and more profits in their business and life. So yeah, I'll link it in the description, but make sure you don't miss out because if you want to get the pre-order info, you can only get that on the waitlist. I won't be sharing it on my social. So really important to go there forward slash BFE and to also confirm your email address because if you don't confirm, it's like you weren't on the waitlist. Back to 
tip number three. Yeah, so what I did is I looked at, I think it's called my freedom baseline. I looked at it and I realized I'm staying home for my team, for my parents, for a bunch of stuff other than the core of my business, because the core of my business is online. I was like, I can literally do that from anywhere where I have Wi-Fi. So let me go ahead and actually do that. And the same went for my days. I had meetings every day. And last year I was like, wait, this isn't working for me. I need my white space. So I took full Mondays off the calendar. My Thursdays became creative days. So just like putting in the boundaries Maybe it's freedom boundaries, freedom baseline. I don't know what to call it, but look at why you started your type of business. Again, that's kind of aligned with the zone of genius. Was it so you could paint as much as you want and now you outsourced painting? That's stupid. Go back to painting. Get what I mean? If this were a coaching call right now, I'd ask you, what is your biggest takeaway so far? Or what has triggered you from what I've said? Maybe it really triggered you that I talked about moving abroad and then I'll be the child that left her parents all alone in Belgium. Because maybe you're struggling with the same thing. Maybe something I say that's triggering is actually gonna like open up something for you that you realize like, oh, I might want more of that as well. I also don't know if any of what I said made sense. So feel free to let me know. As I said in the podcast review, you can say either Megan, wow, such wonderful copy. You write much better than Amy speaks. Or you can say, hey, Amy, you speak wonderfully. Megan's copy is not as good as you're speaking. It's a battle. Vote in the podcast reviews. Amy or Megan. No, I'm just kidding. Megan would hate that. she's already she's on the floor laughing i'm so sorry i'm not sorry by the way if you if you were wondering about coaching and you don't think i'm funny i highly advise against getting into my coaching programs because i'm much worse (laughs) there actually there is no session where i don't make any jokes about sex and you should definitely not let your children sit in on the sessions i'll create a business school for kids someday but i first have to work on my cursing to do that yeah Okay, so and the fourth one is a really big one, both for me, as well as my team, as well as all of my business coaches in the Fast Forward Academy. And it's about targets. So usually as entrepreneurs, we're like, yay, targets, goals, woo, 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 woo. But we're like, let's do the fucking impossible. And I love impossible targets. I'm like, yes, let's make impossible. Whenever someone tells me be realistic, I'm like, don't be such an asshole. <laughs> fucking hate realistic realistic in Belgium is like just do what everyone else does and I hate doing what everyone else does so I'm like I'll set a target that's three times as high as what anyone tells me but I'm not saying it has to be realistic but it has to be attainable and that means it needs to be possible to hit your targets so I've implemented two ways of doing this the first way to make my targets more attainable and thus more motivating because it's not nice to be feeling all the time. The first way I've done that is build in staircase goals. So for example, whenever I set sales targets, we have three to five goals. We have the break even target, like, hey, this is the amount of revenue we need to hit in order to break even. And that means we're in the safe zone. And then we have a target like in the middle that's like, okay, this is what we're focusing on. This is really good. Okay. And then we have like the insanely, oh my God, we're going on a trip target with the entire team which they don't know about, but we might be able to do that. Um, And that's a target that's like, sky high holy shit balls but if you're only focused on sky high holy shit balls it's not possible you're gonna get really demotivated like for me i have a launch that's like two months long if my only target and my only proof of concept of like hey you're doing a good job is at the last day of 60 days and it makes or breaks the fact that i reach my goals or not even if i would hit my targets i'd only get like a spark of positivity on that last day that's not motivating enough so that's why we have these staircase goals so for example on pre-order day we have a target well that's actually not the point i wanted to make so first up is set the different types of goals When it's about sales, for example, we'll set goals both in amounts as well as in time. Like by that time, we want to reach this many sales. So for a pre-order phase, we'll have a target that's good. And then we'll also say, and we want this amount of people in the first hour, for example. And you can have the staircase goals within those targets. So have a look at that for yourself. I would advise setting uh, multiple targets. I know there's a lot of business coaches out there who advise against this. I get it. I do feel like you need to be energetically focused on one thing but I also feel like you do need milestones in your launches or in your business that you can reach and have like as a pointer that you're doing well 
Now, those are result-based targets. On the other hand, I think what you also need is process-based targets. So for example, what could be happening to you right now is that you're like, oh, I want to be a TikTok queen. This is me. I'm talking to myself. And you're like, yes, and I want all of my videos to go viral. Well, fuck you. They're not going to be going viral because not every video can go viral. Again, very demotivating if your only target is like, I want to go viral, I want to go viral. So what you could do for yourself is you could be like, okay, one, I want this amount of followers. And two, I want to post two TikToks a day. And then every day you can be like, did you post two TikToks? Yes, yes. And you reach your target. This is more process-based targets. This can really help you to detangle yourself from the outcomes often and just focus on if you're doing your work well, then that's enough. By the way, if you had good targets and a good plan to get there, usually from the moment you've set your targets and then you work backwards and you execute the plan, having the process-based targets should help you reach the end goal. Otherwise, you made the wrong plan or you didn't have attainable targets. And then what you can do, if you have these two types of targets set up for yourself, you're going to feel that you're much more motivated. By the way, also do set targets because otherwise what I also often see happening is that people, for example, they launch their pre-order or they're open their store and people tend to always be more pessimistic than optimistic. So at the end of the day, like, oh, how did it go? Oh yeah, I mean, okay, maybe I expected more people to walk in then that's probably because you didn't set a target. I do advise you to set some targets. How many people do you want to show up on the opening of your store day? Okay, set a target for yourself. Uh, and then you can also rationally look at, okay, was this a successful day or not? Not, are you happy or not? Because your happiness shouldn't be dependent on the amount of revenue or likes or walk-ins in your business. But let's be honest, we do have emotions tied to our business. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing this. But I would set a target. Like, how many people do you want to walk in on that first day? How many people do you want to buy in that first hour? Is there a foundation of data to support that, right? Because if it's based on nothing, it's just hope. That's not enough to hit your targets. And then what you can do, for example, let's say with a launch, for example, what we'll do is we'll set in between targets. So we have amount of people on a wait list is what we want. And we have amount of people who buy is what we want. So we can focus both on the waitlist as well as the people who buy. It's a bit of a weird example because it's weird in time. But what I mean by that is actually, uh, my dad uh, said this a while ago, my dad rows a lot and he'll usually have like, I think he wants to row 10 kilometers every day, but not every day he wants to row 10 kilometers. So what he does is he'll start and he'll push himself by first saying, okay, I'm gonna go for two and a half kilometers. And then when that seems far, we'll be like, okay, I'm now four minutes in, I'll go for the six minutes. So he'll set the six minutes as a target and then the two and a half kilometers. And then he's over the six minutes and then he'll be really close to the two and a half kilometers. And once he's close to that, he'll be like, oh, but what if I go for 10 minutes and you switch your focus? This could be, for example, that you set a target on amount of people you want to click something versus the amount of people you want to view something. You can kind of switch your focus and play at the two ends. And if you switch your focus there, the result is going to come. You're going to get closer and closer because you just challenge yourself. And this always reminds me of just Kimmy Schmidt, uh, who's like pulling the, what's it called? I don't know. In the, the, the TV series Kimmy Schmidt, which is really, really funny. She does something like she turns a wheel I don't know what the term is. I think she was always just focused on doing it another 10 minutes. And she knew like, if I can keep this up and then another 10 minutes and then another 10 minutes, make sure you set your goals like that sometimes in order to keep you going uh, and just keep putting one foot in front of the other. But as I said, we don't want to make that too heavy because then you might fall out of love with your business, which is not what we want. Those are my four tips. I'm going to sum them up for you. Tip number one, make sure you focus on your zone of genius and don't let other people tell you what you should and shouldn't be doing in your business. If you love what you're doing, you're going to get much further. Two, find the off button. It doesn't have to be an all or nothing, but increase the off button versus the on button. You do deserve it to let your business serve you instead of the other way around. Three, revisit the format of your business. What does the freedom baseline mean for you? What are you craving that you're not getting out of your business, which was maybe the reason you became self-employed? And four, revisit how you set your targets so that they're a little bit more attainable and motivating. 
So that was it for today. I want you to obviously join my Business Freedom Elevator because we're going fast this season. In only 12 weeks, we're going to be turning your passion into profits and freedom. If you have questions about that, just feel free to shoot us an email at team at phosphoritamy.com. And other than that, if you missed the link of the worksheet, go and print it out. It's phosphoritamy.com forward slash energy management. Tag me that you're, you're working on it. I'm going to print it out for myself and my team as well, because this is a really great exercise to do every so often to work on your work-life balance and especially energy. Because remember, you can't manage time. There are 24 hours in a day. You can't do magic there, but you can manage your energy. Have a happy day and see you next week. Mm-hmm.